The xenomorph from Alien Covenant is humanity's worst case biological scenario. It latches onto you, sucks your energy out, and uses your body that you live in as a free daycare center for its children until they blast out of you, killing you horribly. The scary thing is, parasites on Earth do practically the same thing on a smaller scale. And that's when it hit me. I live on Earth, and I don't want the last thing I see to be a xenomorph blasting out of my chest. So we're here at the American Museum of Natural History, where all of the U's are V's. I'm talking to an expert parasitologist about what we could do to stop these rat bastards if they ever get to Earth. What is a xenomorph? The xenomorph in the movie is an animal, clearly, that has an exoskeleton, a eusocial hive-like family structure, and it has acid for blood. So it's a parasite? It's like a parasite. It's what we call a parasitoid. Specifically, only one portion of its life cycle is parasitic, but the adult is free living. The xenomorph life cycle goes like this. The queen lays an egg. The egg opens and a face hugger leaps out, attaching itself to a nearby face. The face hugger sticks its ovipositor down the host's throat, implanting an embryo inside the chest cavity. The face hugger then dies, providing a false sense of calm until BAM! The embryo matures and a chest burster bursts out. It then sheds its skin to become a full-fledged adult xenomorph. They appear to be able to live almost indefinitely in this form, though they can be killed. Notably by this airlock and alien, this airlock and aliens, and this makeshift airlock. In alien so if the xenomorph ever came to Earth, we'd be screwed, right? If, if, the, if this were real and they came to Earth, I, I'm pretty sure we're done for. Their reproductive ability, the ability that they've got to, to survive even if they wipe out the host species is incredible. It's like nothing we see here on the planet. The forecast looks grim, but maybe there's some parasites here on Earth we can learn from. Sure, I can think of a couple. One would be the parasitoid wasps, where they're laying their eggs inside something like a caterpillar, and then the eggs grow into larvae, and they eat up the insides of the caterpillar until they dig their way out. Bursting out is something that you see with nematomorph parasites of grasshoppers and praying mantis. So they really come out through the chest? Nematomorphs will grow to be up to a foot long inside of a praying mantis, so you can imagine it being all coiled up inside. They modify the behavior to make it go to some sort of body of water. That could be your swimming pool, it could be a pond. They'll commit suicide, throwing themselves into the water, and as soon as they hit the water, the nematomorph will burst out, not through the chest, more typically through the butt of the grasshopper. So it's a butt blaster. Yeah, yeah more than a, a chest blaster, yeah. Well, thankfully, we don't have any parasites that take up the majority of our biomass and then come out of our butts. Interestingly enough, there is a parasite called the guinea worm that President Carter, for example, has been involved in eradicating since the 1980s. There's only 24 people left on the planet with this thing, but it, it grows to be three feet in length inside of your body. But it was time for me to ask the big question. Could the xenomorph evolve in real life? I'm surprised at what's already evolved on this planet, so I won't say no. There is this problem that it tends to wipe out all of the things that it infects. And so in order to survive and reproduce again, it would have to be able to survive for millions of years, if not even longer than that. Well, sh Just like that, we had confirmation that something like the xenomorph was possible. So it was time to talk about the xenomorph's weaknesses. Well, there's one that we saw in the second movie, and that's a very clear sense of parental care. And if you threaten the xenomorph's eggs, then the xenomorph will back off. Another would actually be the fact that they're very passive about infecting hosts. A real parasitoid like a wasp will grab a cockroach, shove its ovipositor in, inject the eggs inside that cockroach, drag it off and wall it up behind some rocks or something so its kids can eat it from the inside out. Whereas the xenomorph in the movies requires someone to stare inside of this egg that can't move and be stupid enough to do it. So we can actually get in front of this life cycle by educating people not to do that. Okay, so it's dependent on our stupidity. So far as it's been portrayed in the movies, yes, it's fairly dependent on our stupidity. I'd like to think we're smarter. And so far we've been able to survive a lot of parasites and a lot of pestilence because one, we're smart, and two, we're compassionate. And as long as we hold on to those two things, I'm pretty sure our species will survive. It may seem kind of lame that our main strategy for beating the xenomorph is to simply run away. But some scientists would argue that our deep-seated fear of parasites is actually our best defense against them. Even ancient humans knew what was up. 
this guy looks a little off. So my first instinct is to stay away. And on a subconscious level, my brain thinks he might have a parasite. This ancient evolutionary fear is also why we have the sick visceral repulsion of the xenomorphs. But the biggest issue we'd likely face is that we're not up against nature. Alien Covenant's director has hinted that the xenomorph in the new film didn't evolve naturally at all. Which means when it comes to these f***ing xenomorphs, we may have nobody to blame but ourselves.